Hi guys, this is Mike. In this Cinema 4D tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do hard surface cylindrical modeling. Okay, first let's go to the primitives and choose a cylinder. And go to NB on your keyboard to bring up garage shading lines. Let's zoom in a bit. And what we want to do in cylindrical modeling is make sure that our lines, our vertical lines, are spaced perfectly in between each other. If you say put in a loop cut using your knife tool, it's going to add in a crease and we want to avoid that. So we want to make sure that these are perfectly spaced. We also want to make sure that they're an even number. That's very important when you're doing any type of modeling, uh, cylindrical modeling. So I'm going to go to my rotation segments and I'm going to bump this up to 92 rotation segments and we're going to keep the height segments fine. It, one is fine. And caps, we can leave caps. So at this point, let's kind of shape our model a little bit. And we want to make sure that it's, uh, for this model, I want to keep it a little bit, uh, the height more than the radius. So I don't want it to be too fat around. I want to kind of keep it something like this is fine. Kind of use your own eye and your own judgment. And so what I want to do next is I want to select each individual polygon, every other polygon. So this would take a long time to do this, to go all the way around and select each individual polygon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our symmetry to help us out, speed up our workflow a little bit. So let's press C on the keyboard to make our object editable. Let's go to our front view. So press F4 on your keyboard. And let's go to polygon mode. And let's zoom in a bit. And let's go to zero on our keyboard to bring up rectangle selection tool. And let's go over to our attributes manager. I want to make sure that our tolerance selection is checked and make sure only visible elements is unchecked. So let's select one side of our model, one half of our model. So we select right along this center line. And I'm going to press delete. Now let's go to our point mode and optimize, clear up any points. And now what I want to do is let's go to our perspective view, see how that's how this looks. So I'm not finished. Let's also put in a symmetry for the other side as well. So I'm going to go to our objects and choose symmetry. So I'm going to put my cylinder in our symmetry object, but now I want to cut down on this side as well. So I'm going to go to my right side view and I want to select, let's make sure I'm in polygon mode. Let's zoom in a bit. And I want to select these polygons on the side or the other side. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to delete points, optimize. Actually, I don't think I even needed to do that, but that's okay. As a general rule, if you're going to be deleting any polygons, make sure you choose your uh, go to optimize just to clear up any stray points that might be left over. So next, what I want to do is go to perspective view and let's get another symmetry object, put our original symmetry and put this in, into our new one. Now let's select our new symmetry and let's experiment with our mirror plane. So we want to make sure we're in our X, Y. So now when I go to my cylinder, which is this little slice of our object, now all I have to do is just select these few polygons, which is a lot easier than having to go all the way around. And this is to help us out a little bit later too. Okay, so what I want to do next is I want to select each individual polygon. Now make sure you don't select the K 
caps as well. We just want to select each individual one. So what I'm going to do is hold down shift and just select these polygons here. Okay, great. So next what I want to do is I want to extrude these polygons that I have selected. Now what I like to do, and this is not always, um, always important, but I always like to make a selection tag. Whenever I'm doing selections, I think it's a good idea to have a bunch of uh, selections that you said in your selection tag because you never know if you want to go back to it and do some more adjusting. I don't want to have to go back and select all these over again. So what I like to do is I like to go to select and then go set selection. And what you can do is you can name this if you want just to make sure it's organized. So I'm just going to type in rotation um, you can go rotation sides or polygons, something like that. Now, I always want to say this whenever I'm using set selection tags because I've made this mistake before when I first started out. Always make sure that you deselect that selection tag and then go back to your model. So if you ever are working and doing some cuts and slices and you're making selection tags. Sometimes if you accidentally have that highlighted and you go to set selection, it's gonna override what you had already so, uh, set in your selection tag. So that can be kind of annoying because then you're gonna to have to go back and redo, reselect and set that again. So just as a, a general um, pra uh, practice, just make sure you deselect that and then go back to your model. So now if at any point I deselect this, these polygons, I can just simply double click on this set selection tag and now it has this polygons selected. So now what I want to do is extrude. And the length of the extrusion of these polygons is sort of uh, kind of subjective. But we can keep that if that's okay. Um, it, you don't want to go too, too much, like say out here. And I don't think that would look so great. But then again, it's really your own aesthetic and what you're trying to shoot for. So I'm going to keep it somewhat like this. Okay, so next what I would like to do is experiment with these top models here, these top polygons. And what I like to do at this point is I like to bake down this this symmetry so I can start working on this as a whole and a lot of times that's not always necessary so you can extrude this out but if we're gonna work globally sometimes that's the best way to go because if you extrude if you're doing any type of shaping you kinda get this effect and that might be okay for what you're trying to accomplish, but what I want to do is a little bit differently. So what I want to do is I want to go back to my symmetry and I want to press C on the keyboard and that's going to bake down that symmetry. So now when I go to this cylinder, it's now one whole piece. So if you want to, uh, if I undo a few times, what you can do is you can make a copy of this. So command click and drag and I'll make a copy. 
And what you can do is you can just kind of put this into its own null, option G. And you can just name this archive or old or, you know, something like that. And that way you can always go back to that original uh, symmetry if you ever want to do some more adjusting. So it's just a way of kind of backing up what you're doing. So in my cylinder, and I can press C again to make that out editable. And I'm just going to delete these nulls. What I'm going to do is go to 9 on the keyboard to bring up my live selection. And I'm just going to select these polygons right at the top. Now, if I'm going to do any type of shaping of this, what I would like to do is go to T on the keyboard for scale and just kind of scale this in a bit. I, extru uh, inner extrusion. And it seems like we have a bit of a, an issue. Let's find out what's going on here. Ah, so what happened was when I was, I baked this down, it also included these side polygons. So what I did was I selected these top polygons and I just hit sele uh, hide selected. And so what I want to do is just select these polygons. Whoops, make sure I grab these ones and delete. And now what I can do is I can go to select, unhide all, and now we're back. So whenever something happens like that, whenever you start working within modeling, and you get a weird uh, issue when you're doing any type of extrusion or bevel or inner extrusion, um, I would always suggest kind of selecting that area, uh, the top, uh, the surface area, what's visible, hiding it, and see what's going on underneath the surface. A lot of times, especially this is a good example, whenever you're doing uh, symmetry, I should have uh, known that beforehand, but it's going to add in some polygons on the side. So what happens is when you bake it down, now you have that those on all sides. So it's just a, a bit of a work around there. So let's select these polygons, and we're going to go to Extrude Inner, so I on the keyboard, bring this in a bit. Now what I want to do is I want to hold down command in this axis, in the green axis, and drag downward. Now I'm not going to be using any subdivision, uh, I'm not going to use a subdivision surface for this model. So I don't have to worry about keeping these cuts, um, uh, having any loop cuts in order to sharpen the edges. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to bring this down a little bit just by using the axis, just kind of shaping that down. Extrude inner again. And now I want to bring this back up. So command, click and drag in this axis to pull this back up. So what I want to do is zoom in a bit and I want to make sure this isn't over the top of this lip here. Now the reason why I'm doing this is to give the sense uh, when you're doing a render and you have some ambient occlusion on, what's going to happen is you're going to have this really nice shadow that goes in between here and it's just going to give it a really nice detail that I really like. And so I want to extrude upward again
I to extrude, or excuse me, go back, T for scale. I just wanna scale this back a little bit more angled. And now I wanna to go to extrude inner. Extrude downward again, just like I did before. And in fact, let me um, back up a bit. And I want a little bit more of thickness in here. So undo and just make sure you have a little bit more thickness in this area here. Now I want to extrude downward. T and pull this in a little bit. I for inner extrude. And now for this section here, what I want to do is something a little bit so, uh, similar. Another inner extrude. Oop, too much. Inner extrude again. And now let's bring this up. T, scale inward. Inner extrude. And now let's bring this down and T to scale that in. So it's a nice, nice angle in the center. Let's zoom in a bit. So it looks pretty good. Might be a little too deep from what I, what I would like. So I'm just gonna pull this up. Okay, that looks good. Now let's move over here to the center area. I think I made this loop a little bit too, uh, there's too much room here, too much space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to UL and make sure I'm in edge mode. Select this edge and I'm gonna go to T and I'm just gonna scale this in. UL again for loop selection, polygon mode. And now I wanna grab that selection, this loop, E, command click and drag. I'm just gonna pull this in all the way, nice and deep. So that way you get, again, you get this nice little ridge that will come through. So let's pull out, oops, excuse me. So let's do something on the bottom here. I'm gonna select these polygons, make sure I get them all selected. And I want to command click and drag, pull this down in, command click and drag again, just a little bit of a ridge, and then just kind of scale this in, something like this. And we could use the bevel tool for this too, but I think that will be fine. So there's lots of different ways you can do your modeling, whatever workflow works for you. I kind of like to use, you know, the scale just because I can flip back and forth. But if you want to do something a little bit more precise, you can use the bevel tool. And you'll find that as you're working, what you're going to do is you're going to be bouncing between a lot of different, a lot of different tools. And that will help you with your, with your modeling. Even, even if you can do it all in the same tool, it just sometimes you just feel a little bit more comfortable doing a certain area using one tool 
over the other. So what I would like to do now is add in a few different little ridges, uh, little little details, little surface details, just to give it a little bit of interest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my loop cut tool. And I usually like being in the model layout. So if you go to model layout, you have a bunch of tools down here that you can use. So if you want to use the loop cut, you can grab this tool down here or KL on the keyboard. And what you can do is you can add in a cut. And this is again, one of those situations where you can use a bunch of different tools. So if you go to edge mode, UL, and then bevel MS, What you can then do is use a subdivision of, since we only want to have one line go up, we can just go zero, click and drag, and now you have this little spacing here that will give you some area where you can do some a little bit of modeling. So I can go to polygon mode and what I can do, and this is, can also, you can also do this in symmetry. You can slice this again, slice this on the side. So let's do that. Cause what we can do is uh, real quick. I just kind of want to show you what, what I'm thinking. We can select these polygons Let's say four polygons. And we can select our modeling axis to normal. So if I go to, um, if I go to my move tool and I go to modeling axis, I can go to say normals and I can extrude inward something like this. And then maybe if you want, you can also grab these edges and you can pull these in if you want, give it kind of a, an angled shape on the inside. You can do that. And I always mess around a little bit with these modeling axis so we can kind of get what I'm kind of th thinking of in, in terms of where this shape is going to be. Uh, I tend to use either the world or the normals, but what you can do is you can adjust this edge and push it in using these axis tools, these axis handles. And you can get this sort of like this angled in look for this particular, this particular object. So let me undo and I'm going to slice this again. Zoom in a bit. That way I don't have to, like I said before, you don't have to go all the way around and do everything again. We can just use our symmetry. So what I'm going to do is, as usual, I like to command, click and drag. That way we have a copy. I'm just going to drag this into my archive again. It's always good to back up your models because a lot of times you'll kind of go off into a direction and you realize you kind of painted yourself on a corner uh, in, in terms of modeling and you want to go back to a couple steps when you're doing your your hard surface, um, any type of hard surface model, you want to go back and, and start where you were before. You, uh, if you've watched any of my tutorials and you downloaded my project files, you'll notice I always have like a, 
a one, two, three, just so I know that there's a, a few steps that I can go back to um, if I need to. I can always go back to that original file. Happens all the time for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same procedure as we did before. We're going to go to our front view. Go to our rectangle selection. Make sure we're in our polygon mode. And let's go to our options. Make sure our attributes are correct. And now let's select our polygons. Let's go to our perspective view. I always do this just to make sure everything is lined up nicely. Delete. Let's go to point mode and we're good. And now let's go to our side view. So F3 on your key keyboard. And we're going to select these, oops, make sure we're in polygon mode. Select these polygons. Go to our perspective view, zoom out a bit, and we can delete. Okay. So let's go to symmetry and symmetry one more time. And we'll go to XY, just like we did before. And now let's go to our cylinder, polygon mode, live selection. And now let's add in maybe two of those that I, I showed you. So it's a good idea to kind of count to see how many we have here. So if I go to say one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. What I can do is add in, say, one, two, three, four here. Whoops, let's get rid of that guy. And let's count three on this side and shift, hold. Let's get rid of these two top guys. So it's really the kind of the design that you want and how you want to space these out is really up to you. So it doesn't match up perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep these two. So D extrude inwards. And again, there's really no rules. You can do anything you want. It's really your own aesthetic. And now what I like to do is go to edge mode and just kind of just experiment what we were doing before. And just kind of pull these axis handles in a little bit and kind of get the shape that you want. And we kind of match these up, make sure these look okay. So now let's take a look around our model. And I think that looks pretty cool. So one other thing that I would like to do is I would like to make a cut. So KL, and I'm just going to do a little cut right at the top. And I want to go to point mode. And let's zoom in a bit. And maybe I can grab one of these points. And let's go to MS. And we can do maybe a, a little loop cut here. Or a little uh, hole, little opening here. Now we, you can see that we have these end gons. So we can close those off. 
Let's do this. Let's go to my edge mode. UL. Or actually, let's go to my move tool and I'm going to double click. That's going to select this loop. MS. And let's give this a subdivision. And pull this out. And now let's go to our point mode and try that bevel again. And I just realized I have that one object set to subdivision. I think it will be all right. Let's bring this depth down to negative 100. Let's zoom in a bit. And so now you can see that we have more of a, a, a better opening. Say if we're going to have an indentation, we're going to make this uh, somewhat circular. But we still have these n-gons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my knife tool, um, or you can use your polygon pen, that's fine too. And we're just going to, uh, uh, actually, a better way to do this, you can go to your commands, and we can do a n-gons, and we can do remove n-gons, and that should get rid of our n uh yes, it should get rid of our n-gons. So n-gons, remove n-gons, and that's not working because I think these are selected. Try that again. There we go. So whenever you have, <clears throat> excuse me, whenever you have those uh, cyan lines, cyan colored lines, you can always go up to your tools, commands, uh, excuse me, mesh, n-gons, and then remove n-gons. Instead of using your knife tool to cut through all those. So what we can do now is select these polygons. And you can do a few of these that go around your object. You can pull this down in. Let's make sure it's not intersecting with our other uh, inner extrusion. And we can either bring this in a little bit so we have a little bit of a, a scale, a little bit of an angle. Now if you zoom out, now you can see that we have this that goes on these other sides. And what you can do is you can also do this a few more times if you like. You can select you know, like maybe space this out a little bit. We can do another one here and another one here. MS. Bring this out. Zoom in a bit. Whoa. <laughs> let's zoom in a bit. And let's, uh, let me undo. And just kind of bring this out a little bit. There we go. Polygon mode. Make sure that's deselected. And we'll go mesh, n-gons, remove n-gons. And now we can do the same thing. Just kind of extrude in, scale. nine, extrude in, and then scale. So that's pretty much it. Uh, <clears throat> using the symmetry object when using cylindrical modeling is always going to be a very handy tool. And just the same rules that I said before, make sure these uh, rotation segments, these uh, vertical lines, make sure that those are evenly spaced. Make sure you use even numbers when you're using rotation segments. Now, you can also add in details using the uh, bevel tool, and you can continue to bevel as you go around um, if, if when you see fit. 
So if you go to say some of these areas here, if you think these edges are a little bit too harsh, what you can always do is you can go to your E on your keyboard and we'll make sure we're in edge mode, double click, MS, and maybe we go down a bit in terms of subdivision. And what we can do is we can adjust our offset. Also keep in mind if you use option modifier key and use your down arrow or up arrow, you get smaller increments when you're adjusting. Instead of this large adjustment, you can just use option and that will bring that down to a smaller increment. So you can do that throughout your you know, areas where you like to maybe have a little bit more, maybe a little bit more of a softer edge to your, instead of this really hard edge, you can do that. And that's where the bevel tool comes in uh, pretty, pretty nicely. And we can do this to various edges here. And you can also even do that to these little extrusions that we did. Um, I kind of like them sharp, but that's just, you know, my own aesthetic. So anyway, uh, sorry for a bit of a, a rambling tutorial. What I do want to do is just kind of show you. Um, so I'm going to go to my render settings and just go to effect and we'll do an ambient occlusion. And let's throw in a cube. Let's scale this up, let's zoom out. I go to my cube, go to basic x-ray so I can see what's inside our object. And I'm gonna go to E and just kind of bring this up T, scale this up a little bit. And I want to go to C on your keyboard to make this editable. And I just want to grab these polygons here. Delete. And adjust this cube a bit, a little bit more. Oops. Excuse me, and let's move this up. And at this point, we can turn off the X-ray. Throw in a light. And let's see. Maybe make this an off-white color. That'll work. We'll go to Shadow Map Soft. I think that's fine. And what I can do is I can bring another one on the other side down here at the bottom and we'll bring down the intensity to like maybe 50 and what I want to do is just do a actually let's go to our startup and let's just add in just a bit of a material here And we can bring this onto our cylinder. And if we do a render, you can kind of see how this will turn out. So let's zoom in a bit because you can't really see it all that well. Let's kind of center this a little bit. 
And I don't have a camera in here, but you can put in a camera if you want. And let's give this one last render. And as you can see, by adding in those little details, it kind of, you can kind of see this nice little shadow that we have here. And let me rotate upward so we can see our top details a little bit better. Because that's really where all the uh, action is. So I'm going to do another render. And you can kind of see these nice little shadows from putting in those details and those little extrusions and and you can see the little nice little highlights from the bevel so experiment with the bevel in order to get these nice little details I put a link in the description to download project files you can also download project files from this tutorial and all the tutorials that I made so far at astronomicskills.com also I created a Udemy course for beginner 3D modeling in Cinema 4D. I would value your opinion and if you could take a look at it and review it, I would really appreciate it. Thank you.